how to improve accuracy in quant and LRDI. And so very often I get this question, how should I improve my accuracy from 60% to 95%? I don't get it. I don't get why accuracy should go to 60%. If your accuracy in quant is 60% or in LRDI is 60%, you are gambling for no reason. And so we are going to solve the question, get to the answer, see the answer number, look for it in the choice and then fix it. There's a usual meme that goes on. The answer choice are 35, 36, 38, 40. I've got 4.2 as the answer. I mark 36 because it is closest. Unless you do something super silly like this, your accuracy cannot go out of whack. You're going to solve, you're going to get to the answer, see it in the choice and mark it. Sometimes there are beautiful traps laid by examiners where they walk you to a wrong answer. You fall for it, that's all right. Sometimes you take just take a risk with theta question, that's all right. So don't count theta errors as part of error rate. You have gambled, you are just throwing a shot in the dark, that goes wrong, it doesn't matter. Leaving out your theta gambles and the odd one question where you have caught out, everything else must be right. If it is not right, then you have a problem with, uh, with computational accuracy, you have a problem with being laid back with error rate, you have a problem with operating in a frenzy, uh, you have a problem with not understanding fundamentals clearly. You do not have a problem where you have chosen a trade-off between speed and accuracy. There is no such trade-off, definitely not in quant, absolutely not in LRDI either. In logical reasoning, you're going to solve a puzzle. You're going to mark, get the whole grid and then mark answer choices. You cannot have a mechanism where three of the answers are correct and then the fourth one is not correct. If it's not correct, you go back and fix it. That means you have not accounted for all possibilities. You're being slightly lax about the way you're approaching puzzles. That's not an error rate problem, that's a fundamental problem. Today it could cause one error in one thing. Tomorrow you'll walk into five mistakes out of five in an LRDI puzzle. That kills your score and your, your, everything gets shut down after that. And so don't the, work on the standard set of things, reading questions clearly, worrying about adjectives like distinct, non-negative, natural number, whole number, those kind of distinctions. Uh, draw diagrams slowly in geometry. Account for all possibilities in, in logical reasoning puzzles. So these are the things that you can keep in mind. The one thing that you need to break out of as an attitudinal level is that there is a trade-off between speed and accuracy that you are going towards. You, you cannot tell yourself, I'll do slightly faster and settle for 80% accuracy. That thing is a myth. That, that lets your mind get used to the idea of getting some things wrong. And you start chasing attempts. Once you start chasing attempts and start becoming lax about accuracy, you, you, you have no control over your paper. Your mock scores will be super volatile. One exam you'll get 34 in quant, another one you'll get 13 in quant. That basically because your four gambles all went your way and six gambles went against you in the second exam. So you cannot have a mechanism where you're randomly gambling. It's just absurd. It is a recipe for disaster. So don't let this attitude come into you that, yeah, I'm taking some chances. Sometimes accuracy will come because I'm doing too fast. There is no such thing. There is a trade-off between speed and accuracy. You have to break that, break that thought process in your head and then look at your inaccuracy issues and say, is this a funda mistake or a computation mistake or a fatigue mistake and address that. There is no, no there's no basis for uh, making errors because you're trying to do fast. That doesn't work. That system doesn't work. You're gambling for no reason. Keep that in mind. Best wishes. Okay.